ultimately what this comes down to is despite its intentions and cause for the greater good, is this a step back in terms of privacy for Apple. Hey ladies and gentlemen, Adrian here for Digital Dojos. And today I want to address a topic that's important. It's a serious one and sensitive one at that. Uh, and I'll be right now controversial in the world of tech and the general public with Apple's new CSAM or child sexual abuse material scanning tool that's coming to iOS 15. And for the majority of you out there, your devices. What it means, how it works, the controversy around it in terms of the stance of privacy uh, for Apple and the precedent that it may set down the road. Now, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, Apple announced that they will be implementing a, again, child sexual abuse material or CSAM scanning tool on your devices that's going to essentially go against a database and scan your photos on a device level for explicit material. Now, before we go any further, I want to acknowledge and address that CSAM related content, the eradication, the detection, and the stopping of dissemination and spread of said material, you won't hear me arguing in any form or function that that is a bad thing. It's a great thing, not just for the internet, but for the world as a whole. And that's not the argument that's being made here. The argument is around the privacy and the technology behind it and how it works. And that's why I wanted to kind of dive into this because there is a lot of confusion and misconception around this topic. Before I address some of the stuff like what they're implementing and how it's going to work, I want to talk about the detection in itself because that is the root issue. There's a lot of concerns that does this mean that Apple is sifting through my photos manually? Does this mean that they can see all of my photos? Does this mean that my personal explicit photos or nudes or baby pictures or whatever are going to get flagged for CSAM related material? All of these concerns, which albeit are valid ones, I do want to address and talk a little bit more about how it works while trying to steer away from the super technical in depth process of how it works, just kind of address at high level. First and foremost, how the CSAM detection works is that it's going against a already known database, the SCMEC, or National Center for Missing and Exploited Children's database of, unfortunately, as you can imagine, very highly explicit, terrible content that unfortunately has to get stored in order to ensure that it's not being uploaded elsewhere. And this technology that Apple is implementing will scan against that, meaning Yes, at a device level on your phone with iOS 15, there will be a tool that will scan not at an iCloud level or what's being stored in the servers, just on your own device. It will scan your photos, photos you take, photos that you get sent, and see if they match against this database of explicit content. Obviously, it's doing that for multiple reasons, to protect you, the user, to protect the spread of that information and find perpetrators who may have said content on their devices and so on and so forth. This isn't looking at your individual photos and looking for specifically nude related materials or what have you. The scanning technology that matches against the kind of hash information, it's not even seeing your photos as it scans them. It's just looking at the metadata essentially. Again, not trying to get super technical, but it's looking at the data of your photos and seeing if it's a match to those in the database. That being said, the only process in which the possibility of it getting sent in for manual review where somebody will then have to look at the actual photo contents is a very specific scenario where let's say you have photo A that is in the database and you have a photo B on your device that you get sent unwillingly, you have on your device for whatever terrible reason is a, let's say, 98.9% .9 match. Again, I'm using an arbitrary number where it's not a 100% match, but it's very, very damn close. We'll get flagged for manual review. Now, Apple's arbitrary number, whatever that may be, they're saying that they have a very high level threshold for what that number may be. But essentially what it means is, again, it's almost positive, but can't be 100%. Then it will get sent in for manual review, which... I can imagine my heart goes out to the team at Apple whose job will be tasked with reviewing CSAM related material because at that point, mathematically and technologically, it's probably going to be. They say that the likelihood of a false positive in that case with that technology right now is one in a trillion chance. So one in a trillion chance that your personal private photo may get uploaded for manual review because um, it has to meet a ton of parameters to even remotely 
again, unless it's a photo that you shouldn't have to begin with, match against a database um, of photos. It's not looking at your new photos and just saving those and scanning those. It's looking for very specific data that matches a database that already exists. Now, Obviously, there's still concerns here, and this is where the slippery slope kind of gets open because a one in a trillion chance is still a chance at the end of the day. And the argument here comes, of course, not on the concern of stopping CSAM-related material. I think, again, we can all agree that's a very good thing. It's that of privacy. And in particular, like a company like Apple, who has had a very, very strong stance on user privacy and security, encrypting all of your data, your iCloud photos, all of these things, very, very prominent and you know well known for that that being said i want to address that this csam scanning technology is by no means something new if you're on facebook if you're on google and you use google photos if you're on twitter this is all technology that in some form or function these companies have been using for quite some time google as early as 2008 facebook 2011 so this isn't something new if your concern around that is there if you have those accounts you're probably already subject to this type of technology that already exists. Now, the argument that's being made against this is that of this. If Apple or any of those big tech companies can implement technology like that at a device level, cloud level, whatever, what's to stop them from doing something outside of that? What's to stop them from scanning for another parameter? What's to stop them from looking for something else? Um, Arguments can be made, again, that one in a trillion chance is still a chance that somebody might manually get a photo. And, and with any systems in place, they can be abused. That's That goes without saying, right? And that's on Apple to implement a proper system of checks and balances and be really hard set on how that all works internally. But that is a concern, nonetheless, that people are having. Bigger concerns around governments, agencies forcing Apple to utilize that technology for whatever reason. I mean, there's a good, you know, case that dates back a couple years ago with the FBI where Apple was asked to basically um, hack into, for the better terms, um, a known terrorist device that they had recovered, the FBI. Apple said no, because in doing so, while we, of course, are against terrorism and all that, it sets the precedent for other agencies, CIA, Homeland Security, so on and so forth, to you know, get into this device, get into this device, get into this device, and it sets a precedent that they didn't want to be involved in. That same argument is coming up here. What's to say, even though it's being controlled internally at Apple, that this technology doesn't get abused for something else, so on and so forth. And those are valid privacy concerns. Some people are arguing that this weakens the chink in the armor that is Apple's encryption policy and encryption standards and technology that lives within photos and whatnot. And this is a hard line to walk right it's not necessarily if you're not doing anything wrong you have nothing to worry about it's more so concern for what this technology means at scale and how it's monitored and used um, that's why you've seen figures like edward snowden talk about it look my personal stance is i think I've, I've been in the world of technology enough where you kind of understand that there are these necessary evils and things that you agree to when you mindlessly scroll through and click on those user agreements and hit accept that you are just willingly acknowledging that in some form or function a lot of these companies facebook twitter google so on and so forth including apple have access to a lot of the information that you willingly give them in those agreements as is now we as users are inherently you know our privacy rights are, are inherited rights at that and we live in this age where much of that is potentially in the hands of these big tech companies and that is a concern right and it is important for these tech companies to really rest assured that their user base and ensure that their users are well protected uh, despite the powers that they have, um, whether that's from internal potential issues or government forces or powers that be wanting access to that data for whatever reason. Um, I'm no stranger to this world. I grew up very early on in this Web 2.0 world. Um, and again, it's just one of those things that I've seen. It's something that at a technological level I want to explain and give more insight because I think there can be misinformation and misconception about how this works. And, and unwarranted fears, um, but there's also warranted fears. And I wanted to address why, if you see this discussion being had around CSAM and Apple's policy, why people are concerned about it, not because of the morality of it, but because of the technology and how it can potentially be used. So at the root of it, it's for a great cause. At the root of it, it's globally a good thing that it's trying to address. 
at the technological level, it potentially opens some doors for being abused. We won't know how that plays out until it plays out, unfortunately, um, but it is something to be had a discussion around and consistently evolving and discussing and talking about. So with that, I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions, as always, down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, as well as consider subscribing for more technology-related content. And as always, I'll catch you all in the next one.